Hey there, today a different video about Conan Exiles. I'm going to talk about what's going to change in the future soon in the new expansion for this game, the Isle of Sipta. This news just came out 18th of this month, December, as a producer letter, which is available in the Conan Exiles official site, but for whoever isn't up to read all of it, I'll be summing up, <coughs> summing up. I'll be telling what's about to come in early 21 for this DLC here on this video instead. There will be significant updates that will change a lot of gameplay aspects in this expansion. Based on the feedback that the development team has gathered through the time the players played in this map, they've planned to change how some of the main features of this DLC work, and also add a few more things that people were asking for, well some of them at least, to make the player experience a little less grindy, while also changing the aspects that I believe some people didn't ask for. <laughs> uh, some, well many uh, ask for it, but yeah. Anyway, I think that the player base will always be divided in tastes and opinions, but anyway that can really please everyone after all, but many of these things people ask for, so yeah. Anyway, they show here a graph with the most predominant complaints about Yellow Sipta. As you can see, the most negative feedback went to the trolls part, Plain players, <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing, sorry, players complaining about how grindy it can be to capture trolls in comparison within the exile lands complaining about how search mechanics, issues with trolls or the fact that there are no purges in this map. Followed by 28% of complaints about the bugs and other game subjects. People asking why we can travel between maps or can transfer our character between each map. Yeah, exactly the same thing. Complaints about the new healing mechanics or that the map has bugs and that is made for PvP the most. 22% of the negative feedback goes to the map itself, where players complain about uh, the map being smaller in comparison with the exile lands, or that there's nothing much to do, that it's boring, there's no variety, and that it's empty, and that the animals are pretty much copy-paste or skins from the exile lands animals, while 10% goes to the patch 2.1 that introduced the new crafting benches the one that also updated the troll specializations and so on, which made people complaining about the stations being too big or so they will occupy more space on their base and that there are too many right now. Also they don't mention here but I've seen more complaints related to this patch because it has affected PvP I think. And don't forget that the exceptional and flawless gear were also removed from the game when this happened. 7% complain about the vaults by some reason, including the chests bug. I remember to make a vault and then I ended to go to the big chest and the loot didn't appear. <laughs> and 5% about the storm event, which included its loop and the audio, which does not surprise me. <laughs> For the map looks empty issue, the developers aim to improve that, so they've made a list of what they will bring, so some of you will stop having that feeling that the map is kind of lifeless. Now I'm gonna talk about what they will bring, okay, in more details. One of the things is the introduction of NPC camps through the map, which will be populated with humans that can be captured and become your trolls. In one hand, it's good to give anyone a chance of getting trolls not through the hard way, like how we did in the good excellence, because the surges are something that can become a little painful at times indeed, when it comes to get a proper amount of trolls, at least to work in your stations. But in the other hand, I don't want developers to make the game too easy when it comes to this, so I wonder if it will still be some sort of challenge to get a trolls with the implementation of these camps. Like how many camps there will be through the map? Will there just be a few or several of them? Because in the Exalans you have kind of a bunch of them, not too many, but um, you have like small camps and big camps, but uh, yeah, it's not too hard to get a troll after all. How hard is to come out of those places alive and capture NPCs successfully every time is my question. 
because you want balance, not too grindy but not too easy, while being fun of course. Really that's the way I see things. Then you can do a few more adjustments through the server settings multiplayer later too, but that's not the question here. But they talk about the NPC camps actually, so it seems that there will be a bit of a challenge, which sounds cool. The camps will have different sizes too, and there will be three different NPC factions, the Stygian mercenaries, the Black Corsair pirates, and another faction that may be quite dangerous, they don't mention, I tried to look for it, but I didn't find it. The producer letter talks about a large camp near the Black Tower, which is a dangerous place to settle at. It says they work side by side with the creatures of the storm, so I'm sure they're up to no good, and they probably are ugly and mad as hell, so careful with these mad people here. <laughs> the closer you are to the Tower of Sipta, the harder it will get to beat those enemies. Makes sense, I guess. Also, and actually something they had in the works for at least a couple of months already. Yeah, uh, do I find this information out? <laughs> I'm not telling. Well, is the expansion of the map itself. Yes, they are making the Isle of Sipta bigger. So it is currently around 75% of the exile land size. They want to expand it to be about 90%. The expansion will be happening down south of the island with new content and more areas to build bases at. Actually, I thought it would be a little up north too because of the big amount of water over there, but that's fine. Uh, south works too, I guess. Three new biomes will come together with this land expansion. The Ashlands, Floodlands and Savannah. Also, two new NPC cities from two new races will be added together for you to explore. One of these cities has several black pools that will be linked with the new incoming PvE mechanic that will allow you to fight against powerful enemies. New activities are also planned to encourage the exploration of the Isle of Sipta and the opportunity of setting human NPCs free from camps, making them your followers should be one of the quests that will give you a reason to have something else to do in this map. The storm surge and vaults will no longer be connected with each other. I suppose at this point part of you already know how these things work and depend on each other. You will need Eldarin to accomplish a series of things over this map and go through vaults, not only for these resorts but also to obtain sigils in order to help you killing the storm monsters to harvest their incense, which together with Eldarion will help you with the search summoning over the lay shrines to finally capture the trolls. The developers figured out that this could be a long process just to capture trolls in the end, so they will be rebalancing things and make every existing vault to be level 60 instead so even more challenging, offering you unique rewards with different purposes. You will still need to go through the vaults to collect Eldarium, however. It will be possible to build within the storm area, and the storm itself will be less intense, and building won't draw the attention of storm creatures anymore. You will still be able to face these creatures, which will give you unique rewards, but they won't be the only source of instances you will need to power a surge anymore. The developers will not alter the surge, with the exception of its rewards. Completing a surge will give you a fragment of power, which can be used inside a chamber from the Tower of Sita, for new and big rewards. You will still be able to get trolls from the surges, besides of the new NPC camps. Inside the chamber from the Tower of Sipta, they say. So finally, that black tower will be enterable. From what I understood, yes, that will be great. I think we're all curious already. It can hold special weapons, armor pieces or a recipe. Guess we'll have to wait. Purges will also be added to the Isle of Sipta. A new mechanic will be added with this which will allow you to use resources to either prevent or provoke a purge. New placeable items exclusive for this DLC will be added, and they will also add a new religion and avatar. 
I'm wondering if it will be exclusive for the Allocipta or will have this available for the base game as well. This religion will include, like the other ones, its own unique altars, weapons and outfit. It looks like the avatar is a horrific monster like no other, sure to give those with a faint heart or a certain phobia nightmares. I hope it's not spiders. The talk about phobias. I wonder if they are exaggerating, but considering the type of monsters they've added to the storm, I can expect something as they exactly described in this producer's letter. Can't wait to see it already. And something many were waiting for. I wasn't since uh, the Exile Lands and the Allo Sipto hold different stories, but yes, it can become really handy, yeah. Is the character transfer feature. I remember to say this will not be possible to ever happen in the past video I've done, back when this expansion was released. But the developers changed their route, so clearly what us content creators tell you once is prone to be outdated the next day, since developers seem to change things at any time, especially in a game in such state. They keep changing things, so it's not easy to keep track with things, yeah. This character transfer feature will still be added during the early access stage of this expansion by the way, so keep an eye. And that's all, thank you for watching this video and for your time, see you later.